here today is Kia Ellis. Um, Kia has years of experience working with teachers across the country, supporting direct instruction implementations, and today she's going to focus on teaching techniques and implementing the teacher-student game in your classroom. Um, as we're talking today, as you, as you know, you are in listen-only mode, but that doesn't mean you can't interact with us. We want you to ask questions, um, type them in the chat box, so we can answer your questions throughout. We want this to be as interactive as possible um, as we're moving through the session today. So I'm not going to take a lot of time because I know Kia has a lot to cover. But again, as we're going, please put your questions in, um, ideas, tips, what you've done in your classroom. Please share with us and share with each other because we have a really good group today. Um, and as, if you are here, please go ahead and type in where you're from so we can get an idea where we've got people joining us from. I know we've got some folks from Florida here. I know we've got Virginia represented. I think we have some California here. So you know, please let us know where you're joining us from. And before I go any further, Kia Ellis, it's you. Thanks, Jeff, and welcome, everybody. I'm excited to be here for another uh, round of our series, and we're going to be talking about teaching techniques and the teacher-student game. So one of the things that we'll spend our time on today is that we're going to uh, take a look at the importance of teaching techniques, why they're important, and one of the things we'll spend some time on, this really will help your implementation. So we'll talk a little bit about that. We'll uh, take a look at the teacher-student game and how to play it and the benefits of the teacher-student game. And we'll spend our t last part of the webinar today on signals, which is a very important teaching technique, and corrections. So I want to start today off with this wonderful quote because it really made me think of this is really what reading mastery is all about. This is really what the teaching techniques does for you as teachers and for your students, really. This teacher from Baltimore says, the scripted lessons give me more time to see what they enjoy and to think about how I'm going to keep them engaged and coming back the next day eager to learn. It's not delivered as a script, it's a conversation with them. I don't feel regimented, I feel like I am released. And that really is what the power of the teaching techniques and reading mastery. It gives you an opportunity to be very, very successful. So one of the reasons why we implore you to really use the teaching techniques is because it will allow for a successful implementation, not just for you as teachers, but also for your students. Using these teaching techniques offer the best practices in teaching, and it helps facilitate your classroom as a well-run reading lesson, but it also helps facilitate great classroom management. The importance of the teaching techniques are implemented throughout all of the levels of reading mastery, and it really helps for success for everyone involved in reading mastery. So are you playing the teacher-student game? It's one of my favorites. I love this game because it's easy to implement. You don't need a lot of materials, and it's very effective for all levels. Even if your students are kindergartens or even if they're fourth or fifth graders, this game really, really helps with classroom management and keeping students focused and engaged throughout your lessons. It's simple. You're going to start off with rules, and they're called the star rules. The very first rule is sit tall. The next rule is talk big. The third rule, answer on signal, and then respect others. Those are the four rules that you're going to implement in the teacher-student game. And then you're going to review these rules with your students. Make sure you define them for them because every student will sort of um, decide on what uh, you know, some of the rules are. So make sure you define them clearly for them. You're going to make a T-chart. Half of the T-chart will be labeled T. The other half will be for S for students. And if the entire group, everyone in the group is being a star, go ahead and give the entire group two points. And make sure you tell them why they're receiving the two points. So great job sitting tall, two points. If one student and I mean just one, is not being a star, then give yourself a point. And also let them know why you're giving yourself a point. The class can beat you if they win by 10 points. And here's a great example of how you can utilize this right in your classroom on a whiteboard. Have the rules on one side, the T-chart on the other side. And if you're looking at this example, you'll see that the students earned 10 points in this lesson, and the teacher only earned two, which means the student still needs to earn two more points as a group before they would beat the teacher. Now, I don't know about you, but my students will always say, Miss Ellis, what did we get? So the rewards really are going to be up to you. I suggest that you find something that is valuable to your students that they really will buy into. Maybe it's a sticker. My students happen to enjoy having a little bit of free time or a healthy snack or a cumulative reward. Whatever the reward may be, make it meaningful for your students. And that way, this really helps students stay engaged in the lesson and focus, but also helps facilitate great classroom management. And you know what I often find? It allows me to spend more time on my lesson and having that conversation like we uh, read about with the Baltimore teacher with my students. 
So the teacher's doing game. Great teaching technique to start your year off with. Um, very simple. Here's just the reminders about the teacher student game. You want to make sure you review the rules prior to teaching your lesson. You want to play the game with your students. And then you want to reward them, making that meaningful for them and making sure that they are being a star throughout the reading mastery lesson. But next, we're going to get ready and get into the lesson, utilizing some other teaching techniques. And we're going to start with using great signals. So signals are a really important teaching technique, and I think we're going to launch our first poll about signals. Um, Jeff, do you think you can launch the first poll for us? Absolutely. All right, first poll of the day, please um, interact, ask the questions. This is a multiple response, so select all that are correct. Select the reason or reasons why signals are an important teaching technique for Reading Mastery Signature Edition. So is it that you can monitor every student? Uh, appropriate practice for every student, um, easier for students to memorize answers, or every student must initiate a response. What reason or reasons, I'll give you a hint, it's more than one, um, are, are, why, do, why, are, why is it so important? Why are those signals so important? We're getting there. And it's okay if you're not sure. Take your best shot at it. Um, we're halfway home. Got about 50% of the people done. Just take a few minutes. Take a few seconds here. We'll make wait a moment here. Come on, don't make me call on you. All right, good, good. We're pretty close. We're gonna have to close the poll, and I'll share the answers real quick, Kia, so everyone can see. Um, okay. There, there are the answers we got, Kia. You All see right. them? Thank you. I do not see them, but it's. Can you read what, what most people? Hundred um, percent said you can monitor every student. Um, Two thirds thought that appropriate pra appropriate practice for every student. And 100% said every student must initiate a response. And no one said easier for students to memorize. Fantastic. I, this is a fantastic group. You're absolutely correct on all of those reasons. Signals is an important part of Reading Mastery because it does allow for every single student to respond. One of the things that's really important that we know for students is that they need a lot of repetitions, a lot of practice. And if we're calling on everyone, using a great signal allows for everybody to practice the exercise multiple times. So you're absolutely correct. Everybody can practice. Every student must initiate a response. And what's really amazing is that you're able to monitor every student when you're using the signal because you can see who's speaking, who isn't speaking. But you're also able to hear an incorrect response, which is critical because then you can correct that immediately. So these are some of the reasons that signals are very important in reading mastery because we want all students practicing appropriately. We want to monitor students as often as we can, which we can do with great signals. And then we can hear any incorrect responses and correct them immediately. So there are two types of signals in Reading Mastery that you'll see and that you'll use. One of the types of signals that you'll use is going to be visual. This visual signal is typically used more in the primary uh, grades, so we'll take a look at visual signal. And then we also have an audible signal, which you'll use at all levels of Reading Mastery. The first one is a visual signal. Then this signal is only going to be used when students are looking at a presentation book. So they typically are looking at that presentation book at level K and level 1. The visual signal is something that the students can see. So it's very important that you have a clear signal for your entire group to be able to see. In your presentation book, it's going to give you some cues to help you with that visual signal. If you're looking at the example down the screen, you'll see an arrow, you'll see a ball. That lets me know how I'm going to utilize the visual signal. In this example, we're doing sounding out of a sound. So when I'm looping underneath the sound for mm, I see that ball underneath there that gives me a cue, but also my students a cue, that that is a continuous sound. But notice what it looks like under the t, which is a stop sound. There's also a visual cue for students. It's an arrow. So while I'm utilizing my signal, I know that when I'm using for n, mm, I'm going to go and loop under n. But for the t, I'm going to actually move through it very quickly because it's a stop sound. So not only is the visual signal important, but you'll also have clues in your presentation book. Another visual signal that you'll use often in levels K and in level 1 is the signal for when students are going to read the word the fast way, meaning just read the word in normal rate. So here you'll see the Q as the arrow again appears there, but this time you'll see that you'll underline the word when you have students read it fast. This particular exercise, you're going to use the visual signal in two different ways, looping first for sounding out and then 
running your finger through the line for actual reading of the word. Now, I want you to be aware, though, if you are teaching in level one, the visual signal will still appear, but you'll notice the cues are, are gone for students. So you'll need to remember when you're looping underneath the sound in this example, which sounds are continuous and which sounds are stopped. And so now the students have to do more thinking, but you're still using that visual signal to make sure every student is responding. You'll see the exact same signal in level one as you did in level K for when students need to read the word the fast way. Here they're just going to read multiple words. Sometimes it'll be a sound out and a fast way. Sometimes it'll just be reading the word the fast way. So utilize that script to make sure that you are sounding out when appropriate or just having the students read the words the fast way. We are going to take a look at a video in a few minutes of a teacher using a signal and I want you to know that the videos may be delayed um, with the audio today. The GoToWebinar platform that we are using recently have an update, and we've noticed during our run-throughs and our practice that some of the videos were having some issues. So we were unable to improve the delivery, but we really think the videos are really valuable. So I, I appreciate your patience. And when you get the link for the actual webinar, you'll be able to see the videos um, appropriately. So let's take a look at a video with a teacher utilizing the visual signal. And I want you to think about what you see in this video because we'll have a quick conversation in the chat box after we watch the video. My turn. I'll show you how to say these sounds without stopping between the sounds. Mm -hmm. Your turn. Say the sounds as I touch under the letters. Don't stop between the sounds. Get ready. Watch my finger. Great job. Let's do that again. Get ready. Good. Say math. My turn. I'll show you how to say these sounds without stopping between the sounds. Um, your turn. Say the sounds as I touch under the letters. Don't stop between the sounds. Get ready. Watch my finger. Eyes on my finger. Get ready. Good job. Again, watch my finger. Get ready. Good job. Good saying. Um, so why was this an effective use of the visual signal? So even if your audio wasn't working exactly right, you could see the motions of the teacher actually doing this visual signal. What are some things that made this a very effective use of the visual signal? If you have a suggestion or an idea or a comment, go ahead and type that into your chat box um, right now. Just one or two things that you notice about this visual signal being effective. One of the things that I want to share with you that I, why I love this example of this video is that the teacher had a great visual signal where all students could see the signal, but also did you notice the teacher made sure that they gave the instructions right before she began speaking so that the students were focused on what they were going to do and the, she was also looking at the students. That's really important, so making sure you have good eye contact when you're doing the visual signal as well as making sure that you're reinforcing positive feedback, which the teacher did very well. So those are some of the reasons why this was such a great example of an effective use of a visual signal. Let's take a look at one more video and we're going to see the visual signal being used while a teacher is saying the words the fast way. So let's take a look at the difference. I want you to sound out this word for me. Get ready. What word? Yes, May. So this time when using the visual signal, we saw the teacher making sure that she underlined the word when they are reading the fast way. So that is another way to use the visual signal. The second signal is the audible signal, which you'll use at all levels of reading mastery. And this is used only when students are reading from their storybooks or from their textbooks. This signal is important for students to be able to hear because students will be looking down at their storybook or textbook and their eyes won't be you won't be on you as the teacher, they'll be in their books or on, on the text. So make sure you're using a signal that they could hear, 
make sure they are responding after the signal, and make sure the signal is something that you are comfortable with. It could be a, using a tap on your presentation book, or you could snap. Um, it's whatever makes you feel comfortable and whatever elicits a great group response from your students. So the audible signal is important when students are reading from their textbooks or their storybooks. We're going to take a look at another video with the teacher utilizing the audible signal. I want you to notice something she goes over before she begins the exercise. Hey everybody, please show me that you are a star. We are sitting up, getting ready to track and answer together and respect each other. Great job. Everybody can say point so far. Vocabulary review first. You learned a sentence that tells how long to survive. Everybody say that sentence. Get ready. She survived until she was rescued. Very nice job. You learned a sentence that tells what the soldiers did. Everybody say that sentence. Get ready. The soldiers protected their equipment. Okay, nice job answering together. Here's the last sentence you learned. Lawyers with talent normally succeed. Everybody say that sentence. Get ready. Lawyers with talent normally succeed. And everybody, what do we call people who help us when we have questions about the law? Lawyers. Yes, lawyers. What's another word for usually? Normally. Yes, normally. What word refers to the special skills a person has? Talent. Yes, talent. What word means the opposite of fail? Okay, so I want you to, in your question box, um, what did you notice about the visual signal being used in this video? You can share any comments, and I gave you a little bit of a hint of something she did prior to teaching this exercise. So in your question box, just go ahead and type in something you noticed about this audible signal and why it was effective um, use of the audible signal. We had some really great uh, suggestions um, from the visual signal. So just a few things that you noticed about the video. So I hope you noticed that she used the STAR rules. She reviewed them with her students, which was fantastic. She also uh, complimented them and gave them a point before she began. And her audible signal was clear. It was loud enough for every student to hear. And her students actually answered after the signal. So those are all great comments about the audible signal. And that is exactly why this was a great um, video to show about how the audible signal was effective in this classroom. So I wanted to share some helpful hints for delivering a signal. So regardless of what level you're teaching, you'll be either using a visual or an audible signal on a daily basis in Reading Mastery. One of the things you want to do is make sure you ask the specified question before you deliver the signal. So make sure that the student is actually, or the students are paying attention and that you give them the directions before you give the signal. Then you want to give some think time, which is a, a quick pause, and then you want to signal, whether that's visual or whether that's audible. Make sure your signal is clear so every student can see it if it's visual, and loud enough so every student can hear it if it's an audible signal. You're going to listen for the response, which should be after the signal. Correct immediately if necessary, and then move quickly to the next task. We saw those examples in the videos. Teachers made sure that the students answer correctly, and then move quickly to the next task or exercise. All of these are great ways to deliver a great signal and utilizing this teaching technique that allows every student to be able to respond, that allows you to monitor all students at once and give everyone appropriate practice. So what if your group makes a mistake? We know that happens occasionally. So we are going to utilize another teaching technique, which is corrections. But before we do that, let's go ahead and launch a poll, our second poll about corrections. Jeff? Here's our second poll of the day. How many students need to make a mistake before you can use the correction procedure? So how many? Is it more than one, just one, or does it depend on, on the size of the group? And for a couple more to answer.
quick responses. Just a few more. All right. And I think that's it. And Kia, 100% said just one. Fantastic. If I give everybody an A today, I would. That's absolutely correct. If just one student makes a mistake, you really want to stop and correct immediately for the entire group. Now, the correction procedure, there's a general correction procedure that we'll go over, but sometimes you'll have a very specific correction procedure that will be listed either in your presentation book or will be for a certain part of the lesson. But the general correction procedure, there are four steps. The first one is model, which is going to be you're going to stop your group and actually model the correct answer. So you may say, listen, my turn, and then provide the correct answer for your group. The second step is lead, which you're going to support your students and guide them and say the correct answer with them. So you may say, say it with me, get ready, and then say it together with your students. The third step is a test, where students will say the answer completely by themselves as a group. And then the last part is a delayed test, which is critical because we would like for you to start over the exercise or the task or maybe the column of words because this allows for whoever made the mistake, the opportunity to fix their error. So you may say starting over or go back to the first word in the column. Those kinds of things may vary, but really that delayed test is critical when we're utilizing the correction procedure. So sometimes in your presentation book, like in this example from Level K, the correction procedure will be right in the presentation book. So you'll see a box and it'll say to correct. This allows me as a teacher to know if my students made a mistake on this particular exercise, I know exactly how to fix it using this specific correction procedure. So let's take a quick look at it up close. And it really has all of the steps we just talked about. So the model is we're giving them the sound in this exercise where they're actually practicing the sound for mm. The lead is they're going to say it with the teacher, just like you see here as a lead. And the test is they're going to say it by themselves. You'll automatically go back on the delayed test to start this exercise over to give students the opportunities to fix their error. So this would be an example of how to utilize the correction procedure, which is a great teaching technique because it's not only correcting students, but you're providing some positive feedback on how to make them become better at what they're doing. So it's really a crucial teaching technique to utilize. The same rule applies if you're in the textbook in the upper grades. And let's just say this example, they are actually reading columns of words and they made a mistake on globe, which is in column four which is the second word, you would simply go ahead and go through the same correction procedure. The only thing that you'll see here that's different is you'll see step three has them spell the word. So this is a great example of a specific correction procedure that you'll utilize in certain aspects of levels two through five or even in levels K and one, it may ask you to sound it out. If you're not sure of what specific correction procedure to use, go ahead and refer to your teacher's guide. There's a great um, explanation of the correction procedure, the general one, as well as the specific one. So here you'll see the model, you'll see the lead, the, tax, the test, and then step five is the delayed test, going back to the first word in that column. So we're going to take a... Um, a quick look at a correction procedure, and this correction procedure comes from uh, primary grade, so you may see a specific correction procedure being used, like adding in a sounding out step to the general correction procedure. Let's watch. Get ready. Why? Yes, why? Get ready. Nay. Yes, they. Get ready. Nay. This word is then. What word? Then. Yes, then. Let's sound out then. Get ready? Then. What word? Then. Yes, then. Starting over. Get ready? Why? Yes, why? Get ready? Then. Yes, they. Get ready? Then. Yes, then. Get ready? Then. Yes, there. Get ready? Me. Yes. So here we saw the teacher, there was a mistake on the word, then the teacher corrected it, and then the students used that sounding out, which is that specific procedure for this particular exercise, and they started back over on why. Not the entire exercise, but just the column that was that word was in. So that is an example of how to utilize the teaching technique of the correction procedure. So at any time you have access to these videos on um, 
the teaching tutors or you have access if you have um, some of the digital resources, utilize these videos. They're a great re a resource to use to watch a teacher using the teaching techniques to make sure that you're implementing in the main classroom. And at any time if you have questions, please reach out to us. We'll be more than happy to assist. So that was a great example of an effective correction procedure. Because of time, I want to make sure we get a chance to review what we've done today. So today we've taken a look at teaching techniques and why they are extremely important in the program. It really allows for a successful implementation for your students, but also a successful implementation for you. So you feel like you're having a conversation with your kids, that you feel like you're utilizing uh, best practices when teaching a reading lesson in Reading Mastery. The teacher-student game is a great way to begin your lessons, to utilize throughout, to keep your kids engaged and focused into the lesson, as well as to have a little fun with them. I mean, it's nice to be able to have fun with the students, as well as uh, teach them, and as well as them learning. So it's a great way to do all of those things and to manage behavior in your groups. Signals are an important piece to allow for every student to respond, allow for every student to have appropriate practice. You're utilizing two of them, whether it's a visual or an audible, depending on where you are and what level you're utilizing in Reading Mastery. And the last thing we talked about was corrections, which is critical. You'll get great at them over a period of time. Make sure you're utilizing that general correction procedure, the model, the lead test, and then a delayed test. Um, so that is kind of a quick review of what we've done so far. We're going to stop here. We have a couple more minutes for questions. Um, does anyone have a question? that we could utilize. Uh, let's take a look. Mary, do you have any questions back there? Yes, I do. And if there are any more, please feel free to type them in the chat or the question area. So the first one, Kia, is uh, with just a question about the teacher-student game and whether you can, whether you should play it every day with every lesson. So yes, um, that's a great question, Mary. Um, the teacher-student game should be played every day. It's a daily um, thing that you would do for your lesson so that way you're keeping your kids structured and we have a routine. But yes, it should be played daily. You want your kids to win a lot because you want them to feel good and positive. But I always tell teachers make sure you're making sure they're always working hard and referring back to those star rules every time they get earned points. Tell them why they got the points so they can keep doing those good things. And if you get a point, remind them of the behavior that, that they did that was not so good so they can fix that behavior the next time. Okay, great. Thanks. And the second question is about regarding signals, and the question was, do you need to signal for an individual student to respond? Typically, we use the signals for a group response, but when you're thinking about it, when a student is doing let's just say an individual turn and they're sounding out a word, obviously you use the signals to support them in that. But usually the signals are for group response, but it does vary in kindergarten first grade, especially during those individual turns when they're working on sounds by themselves or, or blending a word, you'll still use the signal uh, in that instance. But most times, like for the audible signals, it'll typically be for the whole group. Okay, and I have just one more. It was about, uh, okay. well, the question was, should I record errors that my students make? I think that actually is a great way to monitor how your students are progressing. So if you see that them making the same error on a daily basis, is something that you could um, utilize to reteach. So I would suggest that that would be a great way to keep um, a good, accurate um, tally of the, the progress of your students is by recording the kinds of errors they're making on a daily basis. So that way you have, know at all times their strengths and what they still need to work on. Okay. And that's all the questions I see right now. Oh, excellent. excellent. Thank you. I just want to remind you, because I know we're getting close for time, to find us on social media. We have uh, wonderful um, resources there. And just like all the other webinar series, if you've attended before, we'll have them loaded up and you'll get a chance to watch them. So just want to remind you of that. Um, and Jeff, I'm not sure if we have uh, anything else uh, to remind them about, maybe for the next series of, yeah. of the webinar. Absolutely. Thank you, Kia. Great job once again, Thank as you. always. Thank you. Um, again, I want to thank everyone for joining the webinar today. Um, we really appreciate you being here. We hope you find these helpful. Um, as usual, we do have a, a survey at the end. If you could just take a minute and give us some feedback, it would be much appreciated. Or just email me directly. I'm the one that sends you the invitation and the, and the confirmations. Um, our next webinar will be on November the 11th, um, focusing on assessment. And we also are going to be having another bonus webinar on the 4th of November, focusing on connecting math concepts. So if you know when using connecting math concepts, 
um, and you you, you want to share with them, or if you teach connected Maxis concepts, go ahead and join. I'll send you the I'll send the invite out to everybody so you get that information. Um, and, and again, thank you so much. If we didn't get to your questions, please know we're gonna we will get to you um, offline. Um, you will get a follow up email in a couple hours actually that will give you a copy of this presentation. Um, you have access to those videos, and you will also um, get any information about the next webinars coming up. So again, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you being here and have a great rest of the week. Thank you. Bye.